hello and welcome i am so so excited for this vlog because it is going to be a shadow hunters themed vlog in which i catch up on everything shadow hunters that i need to catch up on but worry not because it will be spoiler free so with that being said, let me get into what I'm going to be reading in this vlog. I just started The Red Scrolls of Magic by Cassandra Clare and Wesley Chu, which is The Eldest Curses book one. Oh my goodness, I have been meaning to read this book since it came out and I only just got to it because I'm like, all right, I need to pick up Shadowhunters again because of Chain of Gold and it follows Alec and Magnus and it's set in between books three and four of the Shadowhunters Mortal Instruments. My issue, I've always, always loved the way that Magnus is written. He's hilarious, but he has a lot of depth to him and he's kind of one of the characters that is in all of the series because he is immortal so you know he's been around for a while and the issue with Alec is that he's this very quiet stoic person and in the mortal instruments he's kind of written as a little bit of an asshole because I think in the earlier works Cassandra Clare's writing lacks a little bit of that subtlety of character development to really fully flesh him out and so he can come, kind of come off that way and there were just some situations like in their relationship in the latter half of the series that I was kind of like all right like this is just like stupid <laughs> but in the later books he's totally been redeemed and especially like the way that he's written as they're older in other installments that I've seen like the dark artifices and whatnot and so I'm happy that we have this book that explores their relationship in the beginning stages with Cassandra Clare's evolved sense of writing and even just from the first 50 pages I can totally see that she is giving more to his character and I think that his personality is still the same but he's written in such a way that like the subtleties of his character are more obvious and he doesn't come off in this asshole way like he comes off you know as this quiet stoic guy and we just like I don't know get more in his head so I'm really happy that we have that and I'm currently on page 50 and I'm finally annotating again I don't know if you can see but I only that many times I have not annotated in like a really long time just because I just wasn't annotating for a while but i have my supplies so i have all my fine liners and my tabs that i'm using as bookmarks i love annotating my shadow hunters books just because it's this whole world that means a lot to me i've read almost all of them so yes it's a lot of fun and i will be buddy reading this with my best friend melissa we did a buddy read of basically all of the shadow hunters books um starting like almost like two years ago because we read them together in high school and then we decided we wanted to reread them again as adults and we have a few videos that we've done together about shadow hunters so i'll leave those linked below because i think that they're some of my favorite videos to go back and watch because i just love our interactions um and melissa and i've been best friends since we were like little kids so it's really great there are so many lines that are like literally hilarious i have so many new orange tabs for um hilarious moments like there's this one quote on page five and magnus is talking about shadow hunters and he goes the shadow hunters continue their fights to this day invisible protectors shining and virtuous the actual non-ironic definition of holier than thou it is incredibly annoying they literally are holier than thou certainly holier than me as i am demon spawn <laughs> So I just thought that was hilarious. If you don't know much about shadow hunters, they are these race of people that are like humans, that are humans, but descended from the angels and they fight demons. And Magnus Bane is a famous warlock. And to be a warlock, you are the child of a human and a demon. So I will be reading that and vlogging my experience. And then the next thing that I will be reading is Ghosts of Shadow Market by Cassandra Clare. Sarah Reese Brennan, Maureen Johnson, Kelly Link, and Robin Wasserman, and these are the short story collections that uh, um, revolve around the Shadow Market and brother Zachariah, who is a silent brother, and it ties into characters from, I think, pretty much all of the series, and it has, like, illustrations on each one, so we get to get introduced to some of the characters of the lost hours which is good because then the next book i will be reading is chain of gold oh man i have been so excited for this and i've you know been waiting to kind of i guess go on like the shadow hunters kick again when this came out i just felt so motivated to pick up these books because i love reading shadow hunters books in succession i love reading series in succession in general so yeah i'm just like really excited to go through all of these and make a fun vlog out of it so the next thing that i wanted to show is this owl crate box i did not order from owl crate myself but i shall explain when i open it and this is from my friend melissa 
that I am a buddy reading with. So that's why I wanted to open it in this vlog. And let's do a reveal. Dun dun dun. It is the Owl Crate exclusive version of Heart of Flames. Oh, she gave me the pin too. Awesome. So I do have the Owl Crate exclusive version of Crown of Feathers. It's right here. I haven't read it yet, but I've heard great things. And then I just like didn't. I've been trying to be like good with my book buying, so I didn't pick this up and I kind of regretted it. And then Melissa got a copy from Owl Crate that came with some slight damage on the edges here. And so she contacted Owl Crate and they said they would send her a new copy. So she's like, Well, I don't need this damaged copy. And I said, I will gladly take it. So now I have this copy with these beautiful sprayed edges. I don't really care about the damage, although if I had ordered it and it came damaged, I would have done, you know, the same thing. And like, I love this blue. And then this signed page is really nice. And this sequel is chunky. She is thick. I'm really excited to have this. Thank you, Melissa, for sending me your damage copy. Um, and then I also got this Owl Crate exclusive pin, which I'll probably just put on my pin flag. It's a really beautiful Phoenix pin. Let me take it out. Yeah, awesome. So another thing that I wanted to do, and I might film it today or like tomorrow or something, is my Shadowhunters shelf tour. I just have like one and a quarter shelf of Shadowhunter stuff. I need more shelf space for them. But I figured I would show like what I have so far in my Shadowhunters collection because it is quite extensive and it's not enough to warrant its own video, but I think it would be good to put in this vlog. So roll the footage. Hello and welcome. This is my Shadowhunters shelf tour. So I don't have like the best setup. So we're just gonna do with what we can because my couch is in the way of this so it's kind of hard to film but yes let's take a look at all the books here so first i have this owl crate bookworm and proud mug just move this down a will and gem candle that i got in a book box it smells really good and this ravenclaw candle which actually should probably go on another shelf so Okay, so let me first pull out the City of Bones 10th Anniversary Collector's Edition by Cassandra Clare. I really love this edition. It is so stunning and pretty. It has gold edges and artwork on the inside. It's beautiful. Then I have here the Lady Midnight paperback and I this was the one that was sold for five dollars I might get rid of this one because I don't really need both paperback and hardback for the series but it, you know it's fine and then I have the Mortal Instruments paperbacks in which they make the portrait of New York City I'm not going to pull out each one because I think these spines is kind of the focal point of this set anyways so then here I have these playing cards and these are from Lit Joy Crate and I think I think the artist is Gabrielle Bujoso, but I will have to double check on that. And this is Will, Tessa, and Jem. I picked these up at BookCon last year and I love them so much, so I display them on my shelf. Here's a little Clockwork Angel necklace. I just got this on Amazon and I just love hanging it over the books. I think it looks so good, especially because it's a symbol that plays a lot into the series itself. Here we have the Bay Chronicles and Tales from Shadowhunters Academy. Those are two of the short story collections. And then if we come over here a little bit, this is kind of like, so firstly I have a lot of the samplers that I've gotten for the different books stored in the sides. So here's I have a sampler for Queen of Air and Darkness that I got and for Red Sword of Magic. I got these at either at Simon's or BookCon and then here's a Chain of Gold sampler and the pre-order incentive for Queen of Air and Darkness. And then here I just have the two Mortal Instruments graphic novels, the illustrated history of, yeah, like the illustrated characters ones, Lady Midnight, Lord of Shadows, and Queen of Air and Darkness. And actually, I had this out, but the Shadowhunters Codex also goes here. Okay, so now what we do is we go down a shelf, and right here I just have these three Waterstones editions, which are... The Lord of Shadows Waterstones, Queen of Air and Darkness Waterstones, and 
red scrolls of magic water stones. I also keep red scrolls over there on the top. I'm basically going to need a second shadow hunter shelf, but I um, just haven't arranged that yet because I do have some shadow hunters books that don't have homes. And they're just kind of like chilling on my coffee table. So let me pull those out and show what they are. So the other books that I have are this chain of gold arc that I got at ALA. The chain of gold waterstones edition, which is just so gorgeous. Inside here, I absolutely adore it. Um, and I'm just probably going to add it in with my other waterstones, but yeah. And chain of gold itself and Ghost in the Shadow Market itself do not have a home. I just need to majorly redo my bookshelf, basically. But uh, yeah, that's it. Hello, so it's late now, but I did get to page 95 of this book today and I am loving it. It is fantastic. This is Cassandra Clare at her best. Like, I just love reading about Magnus and Alec so much. The action is there, the adventure is there, the romance is there. It's really, really good and my expectations for Alec being written in a way that I would like him better than I did in the Mortal Instruments are definitely being met. And Magnus is great as always. I have so many orange tabs for funny moments because Magnus just has these great one-liners that are hilarious and I literally sit here and laugh out loud. It is amazing. But with that being said, I'm going to stop reading for the night and that's my update. Hello, so it's like 2 a.m. on, I guess it's now Sunday, and I'm reading Red Scrolls of Magic. I'm on page 249, so I got a decent chunk of the way through this book. I have about 100 pages left, and I just love it so much. Like, seeing Magnus and Alex's relationship, like, I'm so happy they finally got their own book because I love their characters, and having them as protagonists is just so great. And we also see Helen and Aline in here and like see how they meet and it's just like funny like this book is hilarious The plot is great. The pacing is great and I just am in my feels about Magnus and Alec because This is truly the book that they deserve and I'm really excited to see where this series goes because I think that like the next one Takes place. It's like not like right after this. It's like in between different books so maybe it's in between Mortal Instruments and Dark Artifices, and then the next one is after the Dark Artifices, but I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I just am, I just love Shadowhunters because it's so immersive. I love being back in this world, and like I have, I have like a lot of stuff. So I have Ghost of the Shadow Market just chilling there, and two copies of Chain of Gold Waterstones because I need to mail them out to my friends because we just ordered together to save on shipping. Um, just chilling so I have like a little shadow hunters shrine going on here and I need to reorganize because I need more space because my shadow hunters shelf is full but there are more shadow hunters books I just need another bookshelf in general since it's 2 a.m. I'm gonna go to bed now and seems like I'm gonna be working from home for the most part for the upcoming weeks because of the virus and all the scary things that are going on so hopefully my books can bring me some comfort during this time and will hopefully help me feel better. I wasn't reading for the past few days because I just felt like too anxious to pick up a book so I was just watching a lot of YouTube and stuff but I feel a little bit calmer and ready to read and yeah I really want to get to Ghost of the Shadow Market and Chain of Gold and that's that. Hello! So it's Tuesday. It is St. Patrick's Day. Um, I am working from home for the foreseeable future. So, you know, I'm trying to keep my routine of like doing all my work stuff during working hours and then reading after. So yes, you know, I'm trying to keep some normalcy in life in these anxiety inducing times. But I still, because I am home always, I don't have to travel anywhere and like, really leave my house <laughs> I'm, I do have a lot more time so I finished Red Scrolls of Magic last night and I just love this book so much I love Alec and Magnus's relationship I loved also we got to see a little bit of Helen and Aline like this book is just like you see their relationship blossom and I think you get to understand Alec better as a character I do think his writing was flawed in The Mortal Instruments and then Cassandra Clare has kind of made up for it and I am happy that we got to see him in this when he was younger but like with better writing 
and kind of made his character make a little bit more sense but their love is just so pure and i love them and then it kind of makes the events in the latter half of the mortal instruments like that much more devastating so tonight I really really want to finally pick this up. Yes, Ghost of the Shadow Market. Uh, so I'm so excited because we spent time with brother Zachariah. And if you know, you know. And oh, I just read the dedication. It's so cute. Whatever you are physically, male or female, strong or weak, ill or healthy, all those things matter less than what your heart contains. If you have the soul of a warrior, you are a warrior. Whatever the color, the shape, the design of the shade that conceals it, the flame inside the lamp remains the same. You are the flame. Oh, I love that so much. And yes, and this one like is short stories and starts with that. So like I'll probably like read a story and then take a break. So it'll be really good for breaking up my reading. And I just am so in love with the Shadowhunter world and getting to be in this again and i'm just so excited to finally 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 get to chain of gold like one of my most anticipated releases of the year and yes and be doing the shadow hunter vlog i'm just i'm excited so it's 2 a.m i guess on the 20th of march i'm reading ghosts of the shadow market there are 10 stories and i got through two so the first story is about matthew fairchild who is the son of charlotte bramwell and Henry Fairchild from The Infernal Devices. And the second story is about Anna Lightwood, who is the child of Cecily and Gabriel. So this is like following characters from The Lost Hours, and it just makes me so excited to read Chain of Gold. However, I did have to pull out my dust jacket of Clockwork Princess first collector's edition to have the family tree here because I literally couldn't remember who was the child of who. So I'm having this on hand while I read Chain of Gold until I like get it straight in my head. But yeah, the first the first story was literally devastating and I'm like, I'm on page 46 and Cassandra Clare has already managed to like make me cry. So like, that's how that goes. Like, I feel like people like shit on Shadowhunters and it just like sucks because the first book came out so long ago and Cassandra Clare has evolved so much as a writer and her books are so like involved and really poignant and like you really feel a lot for these characters and like the Mortal Instruments is truly like the weakest of her works. It only gets better. Like I think the Mortal Instruments is like a really weak point. It's nostalgic for me so I love it but like it's a weak point in her writing and in her works and like the world is just so expansive. It's really fun to be involved and there's so many characters and they all are like so unique like this it's just a really fun place to like be and i promise you if you read beyond the mortal instruments like it is so fun to be invested in shadow hunters and the second story about anna lightwood really explores gender identity because anna is i mean obviously there's no labels because these labels weren't really available in you know 1901 but um actually i don't know if these labels were available or not um because i'm probably not as educated as i should be but anyways so Anna Lightwood um, likes to dress up like in men's clothes, um, but doesn't feel like a man or a woman. Um, so in today's terms, that would be someone that is non-binary, I believe, um, is what they were kind of aiming towards. Obviously, they don't, like in this book, don't really, in this short story, don't really touch on her pronouns, but do like refer to her as a her. So, um, but I think has like feelings of gender nonconformity and likes to dress in men's clothing. Um, and the story about her was just really touching. Um, but also we get like little snippets of like important information about other characters. So it's like it's really cool to see. I just like think it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy reading these books. And I think the next story, so like these were two stories about Lost Hours characters. And then the next story takes place in 1936. So I think they go in chronological order. Let me check. It goes in chronological order. So those were two of the only stories that I think that you need before reading Chain of Gold. Obviously, I'm going to finish this book before I read Chain of Gold because this one came out first. But yes, I just love Shadowhunters. I love being involved in this universe. And I'm really excited to be finally catching up on these books. I love like just reading through them. So... I'm kind of glad that I saved all three for now. So uh, yeah, that's that. I'm gonna go to bed now and continue on in the morning. But yes, I, I'm tapping it and I have so many tabs. That is all friends. Have a nice night. 
Hello, so it's now Monday. I don't even know the day anymore. March 23rd and I am just trying to live my life in social isolation and I'm currently reading Ghosts of the Shadow Market and I'm on page 200 or no 331 so i'm actually according to goodreads 53 percent of the way through this is actually taking me a little bit longer to get through than i expected because i got animal crossing and that's taking over my life but also i found with the current situation going on in the world with the virus it does tend to make me very anxious i'm someone that's very health conscious and it's just scary regardless of you know anything so i find to like combat my anxiety reading actually isn't always the best thing for me because i find that like to do something with all this energy that i have that's like this nervous bundle of nerves <laughs> sometimes it's just best to like do so i've been trying to put more energy into like creating videos and bullet journaling and stuff like that because having something that's very active will help me keep my mind off of it whereas sometimes when i'm reading like yes i can be engaged in the story but it does give my mind i guess more time to wonder and again that's also probably i mean i love animal crossing regardless i'd be playing a lot whether or not i was anxious but i think it really does help with the anxiety because it just gives me like a, t a task to do something to accomplish and it's engaging me in a different way than reading it but like i still have been reading and i've been going back and forth between the game and reading and whatnot and, like so i'm not putting any pressure on myself to like have to read a certain amount like th these are uncertain times and i should just like do what helps me feel better but reading does help but it's not like i'm doing like other things besides reading as well because if i were just to read i think i like I don't know, I just, I just need sometimes things that are a little bit more active than that. With that being said, I did get some exciting mail. I got a cover for my Switch, so let's open it up and put her on because I'm so excited about this. Oh my god. Um, and I figured I could just put it on on camera because I think it could be entertaining seeing me struggle. This is from Etsy from Sticky Bunny. I can leave the shop link below, but like, can we just take a look? Oh my goodness. Okay, application instructions. It took some trials and tribulations, but I got it on and it is so cute. I love it. Hello, so it's, what day is it? I don't know what day it is anymore. Wednesday, March 25th, and I just finished work for the day. So, um, I didn't really read yesterday. I read zero pages, and the day before, I didn't really read that much. Right now, I actually am, though, like, really in the mood to read. I'm really tired because I haven't been sleeping well. So I'm going to read and potentially FaceTime with some friends and we'll have a reading party. And I am <clears throat> reading Ghost of the Shadow Market. I really just want to finish this so I can start Chain of Gold, honestly. But I'm still only at the 50% mark. So like realistically, like I think the most I'd be able to do is finish this today. And that is like a very, very ambitious goal. But we'll see. Um, I do just feel like motivated and want to read it though so i'm hoping that because of that i will actually finish this today and then i can move on to chain of gold and i feel like i'm gonna fly through that because like i'm just gonna be so into it and yeah that's my check-in okay it's on now i'm face oh, yeah. with kaylee oh this camera actually like captures the facetime really well wow do i look 
look good. Of you course I do. <laughs> <laughs> what are you reading? Oh, I'm reading Soldier Boy by Keely Hutton. It's really sad, but really important. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're having a reading party. Hell yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> I'm on my ass in my room, too. And it's a party. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, so it's now Friday, March 27th, and I finally finished Ghosts of the Shadow Market last night. She took a while to get through. She is thick and kind of like the book follows Brother Zachariah as we go through his life from, as you know, silent brothers are immortal. So starting from basically with characters in Chain of Gold and like things that are important to the characters' backstories in Chain of Gold and all the way through to things that are going to play into the Wicked Powers, which follows up from the Dark Artifices. So it was really nice. I got really excited about a lot of the characters that we're going to meet, especially like the first story focuses on Matthew Fairchild. And it like, I remember going to a signing and Cassandra Clare saying like, these are kids that like had a happy childhood. Whereas like in the other stories, like these kids don't have happy childhood. So it's like, how do you write conflict for them? So like he did something like pretty horrible. Um, and that kind of like sets up his character development for Chain of Gold. And then we also follow Anna Lightwood who likes to cross dress, I would say. She's definitely a lesbian. She likes women. Um, and I don't know like if she's technically non-binary and in the book she goes by she, her pronouns. Okay, well my camera died, but I'm back. So basically what I feel about this is that for the Wicked Powers, which follows the Dark Artifices, all of the major players from the three, maybe even four, I don't know at this point, series are going to come into play. Like we have storylines set up for Tessa and Jem and Kit and Ty and like Drew, I think are gonna be the main players as well as Clary and Jace, I also see having a storyline. So like, it's just a lot going on. And uh, yeah, so it was five out of five star experience. I really enjoyed getting to read through Brother Zachariah's experiences. It was fun. I just think that like Shadowhunters is such an immersive world with really like very complex and very different characters. And it's truly just like so fun reading this expansive world. And now I get to move on to Chain Gold and I'm gonna start it right now and I can't wait. So it's now, I guess, early March 29th. March 30th, let's see. March 30th. I just spilled tea all over my book. I am on page 252. I am flying through this. I only started it, not yesterday, but the day before. And like, I've read so much today because it's honestly just so good. Like, I love reading a new story set in the Shadowhunters world. And um, even though uh, my book just got tea all over it, it's fine because like, I guess it doesn't need to be in pristine condition since I'm like annotating it anyways. But uh, yeah, my sweatshirt is full of tea. This was chamomile tea, so like hopefully it won't stain too bad, but like I just probably can't continue reading and just leave it open to uh, dry. But I am really, really loving it so far. I mean, it is just absolutely amazing. I love the new characters. Like there's so many great interactions between them. Cordelia is like, such a badass and we have this whole mystery with James Herondale and like the fact that he can travel to the shadow dimension which was touched upon in Tales from Shadowhunter Academy um and then we also have the mysterious Grace Blackthorn who was adopted by Tatiana Blackthorn so she's actually um not her blood daughter and just seeing like the interaction I don't know there's just like <sighs> the thing with Shadowhunters is it's so involved I mean, we're really, like, at 20-plus books at this point, but it's just so much fun if you are involved in it, and, like, there's so many complex interactions that can take place, and I think that people that, you know, give it a chance, plus past the Mortal Instruments, in which, in my opinion, is the weakest of all of the series, I really think her writing improved so much after that series, honestly. There's just a lot going on. It's very complex. I, the characters are always so well done. She's some of the most complex and interesting representation in terms of like long fantasy series because it's just everywhere and all the characters and just done very well from my perspective at least. And I don't know, I just don't think that Shadowhunters gets the credit it deserves. People just 
or mean about it but like honestly you gotta get past the mortal instruments to get to the good stuff because i do like the mortal instruments but <laughs> books were just very like especially YA books were just very different in 2007 when they were published the publishing landscape was different like i've seen cassandra claire talk about the fact that like that she even had alec and magnus as a potential couple in 2007 in ya was like a big deal and had to push for that and the fact that she now like has all of these characters that are like you know really have a lot of representation it's fantastic and i think we should appreciate her more and appreciate shadow hunters more like it has been so long since i've read this much of a book in such a short amount of time because i've been so slumpy lately and because it's just drawing my attention and i just want to know more and more about what's going on because we've got this new plot this new set of shadow hunters that we are following and i'm so intrigued by what's going on and that's just the magic of the shadow hunter series so yeah i'm really excited to continue reading tomorrow once my book is dry because i think spilling my tea everywhere is a sign that i should just go to bed so with that, see you guys in the next clip. fool's day i don't have any fun jokes for the day but i am reading chain of gold making my way through this i'm flying through it like maybe not as fast as i once read books but like pretty fast for my current pace of reading i'm on page 342 i really am just like in the mood to finish this tonight and that's like it's how many pages let's see i don't want to see so it's like 500 and 82 pages so I'm, I'm on 342 so yeah that's like 240 so like I, that's definitely doable but like I do need to spend a lot of time sitting down reading so like usually I've been doing other stuff and then reading late at night um but I think I'm gonna like just take a, a nap real quick because I'm just exhausted all the time and then just focus on reading this I just really enjoy the characters and like loving being back in this world it's just so it's just so fun and it's really bringing me a lot of comfort in these times of stress to have this book to kind of escape into and i've just truly truly loved reading it so far um yeah let's see uh there is a character in here that is like very shady this is a no spoilers vlog so like i'm not going to say any spoilers but let me just say i thought that this character was shady from the start and things just keep getting shadier and it is interesting <laughs> um i am really just like seeing where like my predictions have been right and wrong and it's been really cool and i'm just really happy getting to know these characters because like even though like they're just all so different from each other and even though there's like bajillion characters at this point in the series like they're still very unique and different and cassandra claire manages to make each of their voices and personalities very well known and very strong and i admire her for being like a really great character writer like that and so and yes oh my god and like the drama and like the, the shocks and plot twists like oh it's so good and the representation in here is also really really fantastic like i just want to take a moment to appreciate the and i saw cassandra claire like got hate on her tumblr for being like oh why is only like in a group of people like only this many people are straight and she's like well like well that's like not fair to say like you know people gay people like existed back in the day and they had to hide their identities and like why why shouldn't i write people with differing identities so yeah it's just really cool like i don't know i just really really admire the series the plot is like 
slowly unfurling. I will say it is, the plot is paced like kind of slow, but like I'm okay with it because I'm really just enjoying getting to see these characters and see their interactions and I don't mind the slow buildup of the plot and I do know that sometimes her first books can be like a little bit slower to get into and then it just built and built and then by the time you're at the final book in the trilogy it's like this beautiful arc and like so intense and I know that like this book the endings of Cassandra Clare's books are always so intense so I'm sure like in another 50 pages or so like the last 200 pages are just going to be a whirlwind so I can't wait and like this plot is definitely different than anything that we've seen before in the Shadowhunters universe and I just think it's really cool that she can take this world and these rules that she's created and constantly come up with new things that still make sense in her world like it's not like she's like going out on a limb and making something like crazy that doesn't fit in with the rest of the lore of the Shadowhunters like it's just well done. So yes, I have a lot of admiration for Shadowhunters, in case you can't tell. So yeah, that's just my plans for the evening, so I think I just want to sit down and boom, 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 read. Like, I'm in a mood to just read. See you in the next clip. Hello everyone, today is Friday, April 3rd, and I guess I'm in my more, like, formal setting because I just filmed a sit-down video, and uh, yeah, I'm already here, so like, usually when I vlog, I'm not in my, like, sit-down video setting, but... Here we are. So last night I finished Chain of Gold and oh my god, Cassandra Clare did it again. I love this book so freaking much. It's so good. Like the characters, I mean, look at all these tabs. I loved having the heck out of this and I also like drew runes in whenever they talked about a rune and I just don't know how Cassandra Clare continues to come up with books that are in the same world in which I feel like most authors would feel like they have exhausted the options for their world after like a series or maybe a spinoff but like she manages to make each book fresh and not feel like it's like this dragging on thing and like there's just new characters and all these characters have such different nuances and I was saying this I think in the last clip too but like she makes these new situations that still make sense within the rules of the world and I, I just think you have to be very smart and very creative and um, have a lot of insight into your characters and your world to be able to do that successfully and no one really has such an expansive series or an expansive world set of books in the YA market that Cassandra Clare does. No one else is really doing this sort of thing and I love it. I just think it's so immersive and it's just it's the same world and you're comfortable with it and familiar with it but like every time it's something new and fresh and i just adore that uh so many things i love about this book the characters the situations like just everything there's so much funny dialogue so many like heart-wrenching moments and i just i just adored it i did and i loved it and i'm so happy that i got to read it and i, I was just looking at all the footage that i have in this vlog and it's honestly probably already too long at this point so i'm just gonna cut it off here but I just wanted to say thank you for coming along on my Shadowhunters catch up reading journey. I truly adore this series and I can't wait to see what comes next. I do think we just got a cover for the Lost Book of the White, which is next in Red Squirrel's Magic series. Love it. It is beautiful. They did stylize it to look more like other Shadowhunters books, like with the style with like a person on the front and they have a new paperback cover for Red Squirrel's Magic. But there is going to be a reversible dust jacket that has the cover that matches the red scrolls of magic on it as well so that's pretty cool and i like that publishers are like really keeping in mind the things that readers nitpick on um yeah so thanks for watching my shadow hunters vlog i had a really fun time catching up on the series and i hope that you guys did too leave in the comments down below what is your favorite book in all of the shadow hunters books and maybe I will reveal what mine is one day. <laughs> uh, with that being said, have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.